Welcome back to the Data Professor YouTube channel. If you're new here, my name is Chenin Nantan Senamad, and I'm an associate professor of bioinformatics. On this YouTube channel, we cover about data science concepts and practical tutorials. So if you're into this kind of content, please consider subscribing. So I have been mentioning for quite some time about making Python tutorial videos. And so today is going to be the first episode and we're going to look at how you can build a simple classification model using random forest algorithm on the iris data set. So without further ado, let's get started. So why don't you go ahead and open up the GitHub page of the data professor and click on the code repositories. Scroll down and then find the Python iris. So because the Python repository contains only one subdirectory, it will show it as a Python slash iris. But in the future, when there is more video in the Python subdirectory, the name iris will disappear and it will only appear as Python. So you can just click on it. Okay, and then you are inside the iris subfolder of the Python repository under the code repository. And so in here, there is one file called the IPYNB. So the IPYNB is the file extension for the IPython notebook, which is the original name before it became Jupyter Notebook. And so what you want to do is click on this file. So the advantage of having Python codes in the Jupyter Notebook is that the input code and the output code can be shown on the same page without any compilation or running the code on a local computer. So you can even look at this on your tablet, on your mobile phone, when you're on the go. So you will comprehend what input will lead to what output. Okay, so what you want to do now is right click on the raw link and then save link as or save target as. Okay, find a suitable location on your computer and then save it in there. So I have already saved that, so I will just open up the file. Then I'm going to fire up the command prompt. And then I'm going to go into the directory where the files are located. I'm going to activate my conda environment. And then I'm going to run the Jupyter Notebook. Okay. And then I will see the Python Notebook file here. Click on it and then it will load up. Okay, so you can see that this Jupyter Notebook looks like a document. So it is a blend of Python code along with documentation. And the documentation, as you see here, could be written in Markdown language or using HTML. So the first cell provides the title of this Jupyter Notebook file. And then the second cell we see here is the header. And then I number it for EC reading. So the first section here is called import libraries. And we will see that there are a total of 10 steps that you could do to build your first classification model in Python using random forest algorithm on the iris data set. So the first step is pretty easy. You're going to import the libraries. And the libraries that we're going to use today is based solely on the scikit-learn package. And scikit-learn package is a popular machine learning algorithm package for the Python environment. So we're going to use scikit-learn to import the dataset iris, which will be taken directly from the dataset submodule of the scikit-learn. And then we're going to use the train test split function and as well as the random forest classifier and the make classification. Okay, and then the second step is to load the iris data set. And we're going to do that by assigning the iris variable with the data sets function and then load iris function. Actually, it is the data set submodule and within it, we're going to use the load iris function. So this will put the iris data set into this iris variable. So in order to run the cell, you want to click on the cell and on the keyboard, press and hold the shift key along with the enter key. And then you will see that briefly the number will appear to be in asterisk, which means that it is currently running. 
and when it is completed, it will become a number. The number will be done sequentially. So this is the second time the cell has been run. So if I run it again, it will become three, okay? So now we're gonna load our status set, and you see that the number become four, which continues from the previous cell, which is three. And so let's enter Iris, and let's see what happens. Okay, and then we will see that underneath there is the, the data, which comprises of 150 flowers. The target, which is the class labels, and the target names. So 0, 1, 2 corresponds to Citosa, Versicolor, and Virginica. And then this is the description of the data set. And then the feature names, which are the sepal width, pedal length, pedal width, and also the sepal length. So what we can do is we could call it by specifying iris.target, which we will do below. Okay. So let's go ahead and specify that as we see that there is a feature name here. So we're gonna print iris.feature names which will allow us to see the input features, which will comprise of the four characteristics of the iris flower, which are the simple length, simple width, pedal length, pedal width. So when we shift enter, we're gonna get the same result as it was done previously. And then to see the output feature, it is in the iris.target names. And actually, if you wanna add a cell, we, we can click on the plus button here and it will add a cell so we could type in iris.target shift enter and then we're going to see the 0 1 2 so it's going to be the same thing but this will be numerical or integer but this will be the, the strings version okay in the fourth step we're going to take a glimpse at the data so iris.data and then we're going to see the data here as an array and then okay so this we have done previously above Okay, so go ahead and assign the iris.data into the x variable and assign the iris.target, which is the class label, into the y variable. So the x will contain four input features and the y will contain one feature. So it will add up to a total of five features and 150 data samples, representing 150 iris flowers, where it belongs to either one of three classes, iris citosa, iris versicolor, and iris virginica. So if we look at the data dimension, we will see that there are 150 rows and four columns. So corresponding to 150 flowers and four input features. And then the Y shape will become 150. So nothing is shown afterward because it is one column. Okay, now comes the fun part. We're gonna define CLF, which would stand for the abbreviated form of classifier. And we're gonna use the random forest classifier function. And then we're gonna call the random forest classifier function by typing in CLF and then dot fit. And then as input argument, we're gonna use X and Y. So what this essentially does is it's gonna call the classifier, which is the random forest classifier. And then it's gonna use the fit function, which will create a classification model. And then it will take as input two variables. The first one is the X variable, which are the input features. And the second argument will be the Y variable, which is the class label. So it's gonna take an X and create a model by using Y as the class label. So the model will be performed in a supervised manner by learning from the class label and finally outputting a classification model using the random forest algorithm. So we're gonna see that under the hood, it's gonna use these default values, which you can modify later on to your own personal liking. So we're gonna cover in more depth on random forest algorithm later on in a future video. So let's go ahead and look at the feature importance. So these are the important features. So let's have a look. Okay, build the model. So we have four input features the sepal length width, the pedal length width, and each of them have corresponding importance to a different degree to the classification model. So the values are in order for the respective input features that we have here. Okay, so the importance of each of these variable will be shown by the number, and it's right here. So we can see that the 
most important feature was the third variable and then followed by the fourth variable and then the first variable. So the third variable is the pedal length. It's the most important as suggested by the model, followed by the pedal width, followed by the sepal length. And the last important feature is sepal width, which is, but it contributes to a lesser degree to the classification model. And so, and so let's make a prediction. And we're gonna feed in the first data sample, which is the first flower. As we recall, there are 150 flowers and the input data is assigned to the X variable. Let's have a look. So you can see that we can move up and down the cells. Okay, so let's have a look. X are the input features and there are 150 flowers. And so here we're going to use the first flower. So we can just call it by using the bracket and then zero is the first position and we're gonna get that, right? If you change it to the second position, you will get a different set of values. So Python counts from zero as the first iteration and we can cut it out. We're gonna print the results using the print function. So the print function is just essentially printing out whatever we put in as the argument. So if we say five, it'll print out five. If we put in a string, it'll output a string, hello world, okay? And so here we're gonna print and then taking in as argument the prediction function of the classifier. And as input of this, we're gonna put in the, the set of values for the first flower. And we're gonna see the prediction coming out. And it prints out zero. And zero means the, the first class right here, zero. So it is the Setosa, right? If it's one, it becomes the Versicolor. And then the Virginica. Okay, and we're gonna use this, which is essentially the same thing. We could put in the set of values directly, or we could just slice it directly from the X variable. So this will also give us a prediction of zero. And what about if we wanna look at the probability of the prediction? We wanna see before it derives at its conclusion that it will predict it to be the first class label. And let's say that it predicts the data sample to be class one, let's say 80%, and the probability of being class two, 20%. Is that the case for this one? So let's check it out. And when we run it using the predict proba function, we see that the probability to each of the three classes are shown below. One, zero, zero means that 100% of the probability goes to predicting the first class. Okay, so it is 100% confident that class one or the Zetosa is the correct class for this input feature shown here in the first flower. So it is confident that the first flower with the set of values shown here is corresponding to the first class label, which is the Setosa. So based on the input values of sepal length width, pedal length width of 5.1, 3.5, 1.4, 0.2, it predicts it to be Iris Setosa, okay? But it's a bit difficult to look at the class label by seeing just 0, 1, 2. So why don't we run this function and then we're gonna see the names of the class label. Okay, there you go. So instead of zero, we're gonna see the actual class label name by using this function here. Okay, so in the previous example, we used the full data set to build the classification model. But let's say that we wanna use a subset of the data set. Let's say we wanna do a 80-20 split where 80% will go to the training set and 20% will go to the testing set. So how do we exactly split the data? So we're gonna use the train test split function in the scikit-learn and we're gonna assign it to four variables. And so they're gonna be called x train, x test, y train, and y test. So it will take the data directly from this function where it will specify the input argument as follows, which will take the x variable, the y variable, and then the input argument of the test ratio of the train and test set splitting ratio of 0 0.2, meaning that 0 0.2 will be for the test and 0 0.8 will be for the train. And so training set will get 80% of the data samples and 20% of the data samples will go to the test set. Okay, so let's run that. So let's have a look at the X train and Y train dot shape. So we're gonna see the dimension of the variables and we see that there are 120 flowers and four features for the X train and for the Y train, there is 120 flowers and there is one column. 
or the class label. So that line is about the training set, and then the testing set is what follows now. So x test and y test dot shape will give us 30 rows and 4 columns, corresponding to 30 flowers and 4 input feature. And then the second one for the y test dot shape will be 30 flowers and 1 column, which is the class label. And so we're going to rebuild the classification model on this new train test split data. So we're going to use the clf.fit function, where we defined earlier that clf will refer to the random forest classifier, and then we're using default values for that. And then the input argument to this function will be xtrain and ytrain. So it's going to specify the pairs of x and y for the training set, and then it's going to make a prediction afterward. So let's run the classification model. And so now the model is trained on the 80% of the data samples. And then we're going to use similar to the previous step, we're going to print the results of the prediction where we're going to use the first flower as the input and then predict it out. And then the probability of the prediction. Okay, and so we get the same prediction that the first flower will be a irisitosa. And so this is making a single prediction meaning that we're feeding in the input values of one data sample. So let's say that we want to predict a set of samples containing more than one. So you can do that by instead of using one set of features with four input values, we're going to use the whole data frame of the X test, which will comprise of 30 flowers. So simply we're going to use the print function and then we're going to print the results of the clf.predict and it's going to use the input argument of x test. And so that will give us the prediction. So the predictions are shown here. And in order to see the text label, we're going to use the above lines of code here. We're going to copy that. And then add a cell, put it below here. Okay, and then we're going to run it. Okay, and then we're going to perform the prediction again. And now we're going to see the prediction as the class labels. Okay, so let's rebuild the model again. And perform the prediction on the X test again. And it will give us a series of values here. And so let's compare it with the actual values. So this is the predicted values for the label. And this is the actual class label. And so we're going to see that in the first data sample, it is predicted to be 2, but it is also a 2, right? In reality, it's a 0 here. It's predicted to be a 0. If it's a 2, it's predicted to be a 2. 2 meaning the values here, right? 0, 1, 2 corresponding to Citosa, Versicolor, and Virginica. So you can see it in one go, the predicted values and the actual values. And then the last step in this Jupyter Notebook file is to print the prediction score, which is the accuracy of the model. And it's take the input as the X test and Y test. And then it will output the score of 0 0.96. So 96% accurate here. So congratulations, you have built your first classification model on the IRIS data set using the random forest algorithm. And so in the meantime, before we release the next video, if you want to test out this with a new data set, please feel free to do so. So let me tell you how you can do that. Okay, so you're going to do it right here. Instead of assigning x to be iris.data and y to be iris.target, you're going to use a different data set. Okay. And so let's see which data set are available for you to use. So Scikit-Learn comes with a couple of toy data set. So the first one that we used was the Iris data set. And so the other data set are shown here. They have the Boston House Prize data set, the diabetes data set, and several others. So please check it out. And in the next tutorial, we're probably going to use some of these as examples. And if you would like to suggest some data set as examples to use in future videos, please do so by commenting down below. And please don't forget to, to try it out with a different data set and save your progress by uploading it to your GitHub profile. And as before, the best way to learn data science is to do data science. So until next time, I'll see you in the next video.
Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, and share, and I'll see you in the next one. But in the meantime, please check out these videos.